What's up, beautiful people? That's right, I said beautiful people. I know there's some people out there that berate their fans and call them names. I'm not that kind of guy. You're all beautiful. You're all on a journey. We're all somewhere on that journey. Whether we're just getting started or we're all the way to the point where we feel good, that we've reached our goals, you're all beautiful. Some of you know who I'm talking about. All right, today, welcome to the Dad Bod Project. Day four of an attempt to do a 14 day fast. So far, I feel great. Still doing my lunch walks, getting good sleep, not eating anything, getting my electrolyte water in, just pink Himalayan salt, a little Epsom salt, and some cream of tartar, which is, uh, uh, that's basically potassium. So anyways, uh, let's get into the episode. Today I want to talk about autophagy and amyloid plaques. So let's do it. Hey! That's one way to walk the dogs. Alright, let's get into the episode. Ready? Okay, I'm back. Let's do it. Autophagy. What is autophagy? And why am I so interested in it? And what are amyloid plaques? And how is a 14-day fast going to help with that? Well, first of all, I'm not making any claims. I've done my research. This is stuff that I want you to go out and look for. And if you happen to be a researcher, or a doctor, I want you to look into the studies that have been done. And especially if you're a researcher, I want you to think about whatever you're researching right now. And if your next research project, if you can get into this kind of stuff, because it's an emerging field and it will be, it'll be huge. There's actually a journal of autophagy right now, okay? It's such a big field. Now, you may know autophagy as apoptosis which is spelled apoptosis, with a P, the P is silent, the second P, um, and that's programmed cell death. So what autophagy is, there's, there's a couple different levels, um, it's when your cells are ready to die. You've got brand new cells that are made all the time, every day, and then those cells get old, and they're programmed to pop, or apoptosis they're programmed to die and the reason is is if you weren't continually renewing yourself you would break down all right you would break down like you know trees are constantly renewing themselves cicadas are constantly putting off a new shell um, there's a lot of things in nature that show us that as something grows it has to renew itself anything that's living has to renew itself and so anyways so this is what we're doing with a fast. And why does it work? Uh, you're gonna have to get really deep into science, but I'll explain it really simply. There's this intracellular signal, okay? Every cell in your body has DNA, and some of that DNA is actively working, and some of it's waiting to be used when it replicates itself. The actively working parts, what they're doing, okay, they are, transcripting proteins, they're making enzymes, they're doing all kinds of stuff like that. So what you wanna do is you wanna tell your cells what to do. You don't want them just doing whatever your hunger tells you, like just eat everything that you love, do everything that you love, you know, do everything that's fun. Like you gotta have some discipline and control in your life. So when you are fasting, you're intentionally withdrawing yourself from the instinct to eat. And then what's happening is you're activating this intracellular signaling called mTOR. Uh, the name actually doesn't really mean anything to us. It's called the million target of rapamycin. Rapamycin is, a, is an antifungal that was described, or that was um, discovered on the island of Rapa Nui, Easter Islands, and basically, We've found the target of rapamycin through giving people that antifungal. 
And that's how scientists discovered it because it had specific properties that did certain things to patients that uh, were undesirable and so we needed to learn more about that. And what ended up happening is we found out that when you are stimulating uh, mTOR, okay, you're basically telling your body that there's plenty of food, that there's lots of food around. So insulin stimulates mTOR. Uh, and a lot of things that happen, all the, uh, all the, basically like the hormones that are activated when you eat, those tell your cells, hey, there's plenty of food. No, we're not going to use that programmed cell death, that apoptosis. We're not gonna be doing that today because we're building. We're building, we're building, we're building. Insulin is a anabolic hormone. It builds stuff, it builds fat. And your body doesn't like to build and break down at the same time. But ancient humans always had periods between their meals where there was low, low levels of insulin and other hormones that are related to eating. And that would break down the old bad cells. So now we, since we always have food around us all the time, we need to schedule times when we can allow this to happen to our body. That's my opinion. Talk to your doctor about that. Uh, they may not agree with me, and that's fine, but you may find a lot of doctors who do agree with me. So go ahead and, and try and find somebody who can help you safely do uh, some intermittent fasting or extended fasting because those are the types of behaviors, those are the types of things that can do that. All right, now next subject is amyloid plaques. All right, you may have heard of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is uh, very undesirable. It's, you know, it kind of looks like dementia for a while, but there's a lot of hallucinations, extremely disorganized thinking. There's a lot of problems with uh, getting Alzheimer's because it's a progressive disease. It's, once you have it, it's not like you can get rid of it. I mean, we said about that about diabetes for a long time. Maybe there is some way to get rid of Alzheimer's and reverse it and cure it. But as far as we know now, there's no cure for Alzheimer's. And all of the medications that they're studying, they're having a really, really hard time doing that. Now, amyloid plaques are typically associated with Alzheimer's, but we don't know if it's a correlation or a causation. There's also these things called tau proteins, and, and, and tau bodies will also be, uh, you know, in the same place. But one of the things that's emerging in, in research is this concept called insulin degrading enzyme. Insulin degrading enzyme does exactly what you'd expect it to do. After you have a meal, you get a bolus of insulin from your pancreas, okay? Insulin's the fat storing hormone. And then your body needs to break down insulin at some point because your blood sugar is fine and, and your, your body doesn't want blood, your blood sugar to be too low. So it's got to degrade insulin. That, in, that enzyme though has a, has a really strong affinity towards insulin, but it can also break down amyloids, okay? So in your brain, if you're not constantly giving yourself time for your body to be in a low insulin state, then what's gonna happen to those things in your brain that insulin degrading enzyme could also break down and get rid of and remove from your brain, right? That's the, that's the big question is, does fasting help that? Will fasting give me an advantage in, a, in the long term, okay? The Dad Bod Project is not just about the bod, it's about long life. It's about living a long life and trying to avoid these chronic degenerative diseases of overconsumption and affluence got to regulate a few things so anyways I'm totally I'm 100% positive that right now well I guess I'm not actually I'm not I wouldn't say that um, according to all the research according to everything that I know right now I should be experiencing a lot of autophagy because I haven't eaten today's day four I'm at about I don't know be somewhere between 80 and 90 hours of fasting um, this is my longest fast ever 
my insulin is really low that means insulin degrading enzyme can be pulling all of those amyloids out of my brain which is what I want them to do that's what I want I want that to happen it's so important okay so uh, anyways update on the fast I feel great I still got tons of energy I got a good night's sleep last night except I woke I got woken up a little early my daughter came in the room um, but things are going really well like I said I just went for a half an hour walk like I do every day and I feel fine I feel good I feel sharp my brain is sharp right now everything is moving along really nicely I'm replacing my electrolytes properly so I'll keep everybody updated thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the whole 14 days of my fast of course unless if I have to stop early for some reason uh, and I will if I need to if I feel like it's unsafe for me to continue fasting for either me or my patients um, and uh, starting day one you can go back and watch the rest of my videos how I feel things that are going on um, why I'm doing this yesterday I talked about what it's like being a nurse while you're fasting and uh, dad bod project peace I'm out of here for now I'll see you on the next one see you later beautiful people stay beautiful keep working on yourselves do well all right peace bye